where ancient ruins perch on cliffs gnawed by the seven seas. The myths and legends hide beneath cold quilt of centuries. The granite walls are lone and bare. The mist swirls gray and thick. Crumbling turrets blindly stare upon the mountain peaks. The legend flies on windborne wings to where bright swords doth ring and death infuses arrow sting thrown from drawn bowstring. The day will come, I do believe, when shadows come to life. A voice will urge me, make thy way to time of pride and strife. To fearless battle calls the bell, rewarded be your feats, with truthful ballad that will tell the world of all thy deeds. I woke up and could not remember anything. <laughs> Today we're going to be taking a look at Evil Islands, released April 16th, 2001, and developed by Nival Interactive, a Russian company better known for games such as Silent Storm and Rage of Mages. Now, before I really get into the review, I would like to mention that I did have some trouble recording this. In order to record it, I had to put it in a windowed mode, and I was not able to capture the entire screen of the game. And you can kind of see the game hanging up sometimes, and I don't know why that is. I, I played around with the, the settings and such, but, well, you know, it is what it is. So anyway, this game got my attention for how it works. It's a RPG that's got a very unique feel to it. Not only that, but the story and setting aren't very typical of RPGs. Let me explain. The game takes place on several islands with a character unwilling to fully accept that he's some sort of quote-unquote chosen one, but he goes along with it anyway. Instead of being a medieval-themed setting, the world appears to be currently only able to produce Stone Age technology, yes. which for me personally makes for a nice change in an, an RPG. Yes. In fact, the entire game from the outfits, the weapons, yes. even the HUD and menus all have a Stone Age aesthetic, and I personally find it quite immersive. All this being said, this is not a run-of-the-mill RPG. It has quite a few things that make it stand out. The first thing is how you, quote-unquote, level up. There are no levels. Now, before you say it, I know there's other games that have a similar system, but anyway, you spend experience points in the shops to upgrade skills and spells. Buying weapons and armor is also quite different. Instead of just buying, you can actually craft. The crafting involves going out and searching for the different materials, such as leather, for example, and later, you go to the shop, you buy your blueprints, and you put it up all on the table there, and, you know, you create the item. It actually costs you a bit, but it's a nice system. So if you haven't already guessed, there's quite a bit of farming to do along with the many quests. Although, in some games where the farming is kind of tedious and, and annoying... My experience with this game so far is that it's quite the contrary. It's actually quite fun because you actually have something to look forward to in the form of armor or, or weapons or, or whatnot. Instead of just getting the gold and buying it, you're actually working toward a goal in the form of your gear, of course. There are tons of quests in this game, and they themselves are a lot of fun and quite challenging, even with the difficulty turned down. Many times you'll have to think before acting, find a way to sneak around, or even lure other enemies to your objective to serve as a distraction. Those are only just some examples. Now, a lot of times there's multiple different ways to actually resolve just one quest, so keep an eye on that, and be sure to kind of, I guess you could say, think outside the box. Luckily, the game has a very good and detailed tutorial helping you learn as you play. Now, although I have not played the entire game, I can already say and foresee that this is 
quite a challenging game that's going to test your strategy and tactics. So keep that in mind, and if you like this kind of game, just have a bit of patience when you're going through the quests. You're going to be doing <laughs> quite a bit of load saving. Now, I'll briefly touch on the graphics. It's quite typical for its time, and it's not too bad. I like the use of a vibrant color, which has been very well utilized, in my opinion, on the island setting. The game actually looks quite nice in both the day and night settings, especially at night. It's it's quite a nice-looking night graphics, I guess you could say. It's 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 quite uh, it's got a nice color to it, I guess you could say. The the night time in this game. Now, I'm gonna have to mention that. The game is from the early 2000s, just like I mentioned before, so you can expect the polygons to not be so well defined, obviously, as they are now. But I usually say in my philosophy with games that it's no problem for me, the game being as old as it is and all. In fact, uh, the games from the early 2000s always had a draw to me, at least at 3D graphics, because I, I guess it was because that I didn't have the opportunity to play a lot of these games because the PC I had in the early 2000s, <laughs> there was no way that it could have played these games. It was quite a low-end PC and really only capable of playing 2.5D type games like Diablo 2, SimCity 3000 and the like. And it even struggled with SimCity 3000. So <laughs> that's just to give you an idea of uh, what I was working with back then. I tell you what, a good thing the game has is the sound. The quality I find is quite good for the time, with lots of ambient sound effects further immersing the player in the game's world. The music also does much the same, in my opinion, using primitive musical instruments. The voice acting, however, is hit or miss. Some characters will use quite talented voice actors, while others are on the borderline of mediocrity. The player character is, in fact, one of the latter. The gameplay itself is well-designed and fun, and although many times the player is left to figure out how to resolve any given quest, the game often will give you suggestions or even hints. This, along with the detailed quest map you're given before the start of each quest, is all great, and I honestly can say that it's pretty darn well executed. There are, of course, some negative things, such as all games have. Like the camera, for example, which I found to be uncomfortable and difficult to use, to put it mildly. It's as if you're never able to find the position you want to, to be in, as it's incredibly sensitive. And, you know, I even played around with the settings a bit to try to change it, and it really didn't do much. It's... It's incredibly sensitive. So, look, what I'm saying here is everyone is sure to find their own little pet peeve in game, but I find my complaints to be quite few, personally. So, wrapping up here, I find Evil Islands, as already mentioned, a very enjoyable game. I went in kind of expecting an average RPG experience and was pleasantly surprised by what I discovered. It's not a game that was very well known when it came out, at least not in the United States, where I'm from. So I think it's fair to say that many of us missed this one, and I highly recommend picking your copy up. On GOG, its price is currently €5.39, quite a fair price for how much gameplay you're getting, really. And I'd also like to say it works just fine on modern systems i haven't had any problems and you know if you do uh, there's bound to be a patch out there somewhere there's normally tons of patches for these old games like this so if you're looking for a rpg that's out of the ordinary and gives you lots of freedom what are you waiting for give it a try